Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler, and today we're going to be talking about Power BI alternatives. Uh, and this is going to become a regular, ser regular series. Uh, I'll be doing a number of these videos. Um, today we're going to start with a product called uh, MetaBase. Um, but you know, before we get to that, you know, why are we looking at Power BI alternatives? Power BI alternatives. Well, number one, it's always a good idea to uh, to take a look at what else is out there in the market, right? So you know you might find some things in there that are better, or get some ideas, um, figure out different ways of doing things. It's always good to keep them open, open mind, and learn about as much stuff as you can, right? Plus the fact we have this forty percent, you know, price gouging that Microsoft is doing seems like a pretty good you know, catalyst, if you will, to, hey, why not? You know, we haven't done this in a while, gone out and looked out, looked at what else is out there. Um, now that, you know, this is $10, it was $10 per month. Now it's, now it's 14. And, you know, is there anything else out there that, you know, can provide 80% of the functionality for less money, right? You know, uh, this is pretty, that's a pretty dramatic change in price. Um, so, you know, Power BI has been known as kind of the low cost, you know, tool that's out there compared to like Tableau and Click just has bizarre part. You know, their licensing is just weird in my opinion. Um, so why not? You know, seems like a good time to, to go do it. So, so I found this article, <laughs> seven best open source BI tools. Now, for those of you that know me and have followed this channel for a while, you know that I am no fan of open source. Um, but we're going to keep an open mind here. Um, and so they list like uh, Apache Superset, uh, Metabase, uh, BERT, Business Intelligence Reporting Tools. That's such an open source name. Uh, Pentaho, Jaspersoft, Helical, Helical Insight, Red Dash. Right. So we're going to go and the, and that's going to be the series, right? We're going to go through and look at each of these tools. And so I you know, looked at Apache Superset. Anything with the Apache name on it, it's just an almost an immediate no for me. Um, I, I understand that Apache servers run the internet and all of that, but that, that's literally the only good product that that entire foundation has ever produced, in my opinion. Um, Hadoop was a freaking train wreck um, and compli complicated and just awful. Um, and there's so much better, you know, systems that do that these days. Um, so anyway, <laughs> versus, hey, let's go compile some Hadoop servers and run them. Um, so I'm going to just skip past Apache Superset. I did look at it and it, it met all of my very, very low, you know, expectations of what I was expecting from this foundation, right? Their quick start is anything, but, you know, you got to run Docker and all this other stuff and blah, blah, blah. And it really only, there's no real windows support. It's all Linux. Uh, so whatever guys, um, guys need to like wake up and, you know, actually get some sense in your heads, Apache Foundation. Anyway, if, uh, that's classic, just crap open source in my opinion. So anyway, so, so Metabase. So Metabase was the next one I took a look. It's second on the list, right? Um, it's got a nice looking website, right? And it's used by, I think, you know, this announcement that was uh, 350,000 organizations. You know, Metabase apparently is, is used by 60,000 companies. So that's not bad um, in comparison. Um, and they've got, you know, Places like OpenAI, McDonald's, right? Capital One, some big names on here. Um, but, you know, of course, for me, it's like, well, how easy is this to get up and running? And can it produce decent visuals and things of that nature? So they, the surprising part of it, now they, they do, like, if you say try for free, right? Or the pricing stuff. Where's the pricing? Pricing. Yeah, so they have, like, open source is free. Um, the starter is $85 per month. That's for five users, right? And then after that, it's just $5 per user per month. So actually, far, you know, less expensive than Power BI. Now it's almost a third of Power BI's price, right? $5 versus $14. Um, and then for the Pro is $500, $500 per month, includes 10 users. So those are $50, you know, per user per month. But then after that, it's just $10. So now it's actually it was the same price as Power BI Pro. Now it's even, now it's 40% less. Right. Um, and then apparently you can get an enterprise uh, where it's like 15 K per year, which is still far less than five grand per month, which would be like your enter starter starter enterprise licensing for an F64 plus SKU. Um, and so you have to get sales in that sort of. But the interesting thing about this, in my opinion, is that 
you can run the whole thing for free if you wanted to. Um, in fact, that's what I'm doing right now. So I've got the uh, I've got it running right here, right? So here it is, just running in a command line as a as a Java jar file. So and it's stupidly easy to do. So they have a they, you know again they have this Docker thing. I really have not messed around with, with Docker. I really should, but I haven't been messing around with it. Um, uh, maybe I'll get to that while I go through all this open source banana stuff. Uh, but down you download the metabase jar file. Right, and then you run in a command line Java dash jar metabase editor. Boom, it's up and running. Right, and so that's that's what I have running right now. Um, and then, yeah, that's the same thing. Um, and so here it is. This is a running on my local host three thousand. Right, so you could actually literally just spin up a server, run the jar file, and away you go, and and start start using this stuff. And they've got it comes with an example database, uh, which is kind of nice uh, because it allows you to explore the platform without. Uh, messing thing, you know, messing around like they have this. Uh, that's invoices and that sort of thing. But uh, go back here, pick up where you left off. Yeah, test sum of payment per country. So this is all the some of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, so yeah, so you know they have thing. And so here I'll, I'll just show you. Like here's a little report dashboard dashboard that I was creating and just messing around with things. It's kind of interesting in terms of how you do this. So I can like go in here. It's all web based and editing. So there is no like thick client like you have with Power BI desktop and that sort of thing. It's all literally just, you know, in the web server, in a browser, right? You can do stuff. And it's kind of a little bit interesting. Like you can do, the way it works is you have these tiles and then you have select a question. So you can select questions that are created, right? Or you can actually create new questions. When I save, I say new question or SQL query. Right, or I can create a dashboard or collection or model or metric. I haven't really messed around a ton with it. This is going to be an initial kind of launch of this series, and I'll probably revisit uh, different uh, products as I mess around with them. But I mean, what you can do is you can say, okay, I want to create a new question, um, and I want this question to be on a particular table, like people, let's say. Um, so I have people, and then pick a column to group by. So what do we have? And we have email, password, name, state, source. That sort of thing. And so maybe I just want to summarize, like, let's say count of rows uh, by state, right? So blah, blah, blah. You say visualize it. And so bam, there it is. Like, right? there's your there's your map visual. They have Texas has 194 employees. Georgia has 78, 74, 65, you know, 90, that sort of thing. So and then, you know, you can save this and say, OK, yep, save this question. Anyone, do you, want, do you want to add it to the dashboard? Yep, let's add it to the dashboard. I'll select my test dashboard. You know, boom, there's my visual, right? And of course, I can move it around and things like that and, you know, all that fun stuff. So pretty interesting, pretty simple to use, self-service, right? I mean, it's actually, I got to say, it's way better uh, in terms of this open source, most open source garbage that I, that I see out there. This isn't too bad. It's kind of slick, a little, definitely a little different than how um power bi desktop works although really if you think about it it's really very much the same as how microsoft was trying to go with q a and the q a visual was the same kind of idea where oh you would ask questions and then you get back results based upon those questions and that sort of you have visualization options right you can go in there and edit this uh what exactly you could do a pin map you a grid map uh oh, that needs latitude and longitude so apparently the region map is the only one that has like this is like your filled map visual and that sort of thing again i'm still i've just barely been playing around with this stuff um click behavior so oh you can open metadata drill through you can go to a custom destination like another dashboard or a save question or a url so i mean very very analogous functionality what dashboards have in power bi dashboards um you know in terms of, i think that's kind of interesting um, some of the other interesting stuff about it, you know, and these are so all these are based on questions, right? And then let's see if I save this. Like it has some pretty cool stuff. Like if I if I click on one of these, I want I want to see these invoices. So these are my invoice payments by month. I want to see the invoices at that particular point in time. Boom, there's the table, right? And I can go back. Um, you know, so much of this is seems. I mean, it really is sort of familiar to me in terms of like this is like your table view. Right when you go into Power BI Desktop, right? Uh, see this month by week. So bam. So there's that month by the weeks in the month, I guess. 
You know, it's got that's basically built in. I didn't have to configure anything. I literally just built in drill through behavior. Like I didn't have to go create another page, you know, do, you know, set up drill through, set up my drill through filters. And so, I mean, a lot of this stuff is, is way easier than Power BI. Um, I can break this thing out by by category or location. Let's say location, country. Boom. Again, again, it's like a drill through that I didn't have to configure it at all. Right, it just natively no does it, and creates the creates the visual on the page the page for me. And I got my back button, right? And this is something I found really interesting too. Was these automatic insights again? You know, what's this down here? Ah, oh, that's interesting. Crazy, so many cool little things that they you know, and I literally I didn't do anything. Filter the spot value by equal. I have no idea what I'm doing here, but anyway, I'll show you this one right here. Uh, right here, uh, and say automatic insights. And let's say x ray. Right, so it gives, comes out, it's like this is kind of like your, your same kind of stuff with uh, Power BI when you do your quick insights. Um, you know, I don't know if that's even, they're even going to keep that around anymore. It doesn't seem to be working for me. Um, these days within the Power BI service, quite honestly, I get zero results when I try to get insights about anything. Um, it's like it's almost like it's broken because they're trying to migrate it to Fabric and you're only going to get that functionality via Microsoft, you know, Fabric Copilot. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty cool. And then I can s now the one thing that's bad about this is like, OK, um, I can't do anything with this, but I can save this entire page essentially. Right. So I've got it saved. And so now, if I go back to home, right here, oh, uh, no, no, is it invoices? Where did, where did it save it for, for me? I know it saved it. I'll try this again. Okay, see it. Okay, so here we go. So now the only bad thing about it is it's it you can't just like automatically add this to another dashboard from what I can tell, right? It doesn't give you that option. So it almost is almost like you have to edit the question and then figure out what the question it was that it created, uh, right? And then go duplicate it on another dashboard. So I think that could be definitely improved. Um, yeah, so this again, nothing's ever going to be perfect, right? Download results. Um, so I can download it as a CSV, as an XLSX, as a JSON, as a ping, right? So that's kind of nice, formatted or unformatted. Interesting stuff. Uh, I wonder if it supports more than 5,000 rows. <laughs> um, so anyway, you know, so my first impressions of Metabase is, I, you know, I don't know if it could fully replace uh, Power BI or not, but um, it looks pretty good so far. And it's also got this admin settings up here. So, you know, you could literally just spin up a server, run this run this jar file on it, um, and then you can actually go into these admin settings and say that you can, like, add a database. Um, I haven't had any success adding databases um, quite yet, um, but you, here you, you can, like, set up, you know, here's my databases, my table metadata, right, um, my people, so I can invite new people, you know, to come in here. Um, I can set up permissions and that. I have my performance and my troubleshooting, right? I mean, it's 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 pretty full. You know, I can control, let's see, some maps, custom maps, localization, public sharing. So if we if we can turn that off, just like publish to web, we can turn publish to web off. Email, yep, that's my email. SMTP, general configured for updates. So, I mean. Pretty all features enabled. Must apply an API key before AI features can be enabled. Okay, so they're also going to charge you for AI stuff. But again, for an open source type thing, um, not terrible. Um, it's a lot more polished than I generally see with a lot of a uh, with a lot of open source type of stuff. Um, that's probably because it's not free as in beer, right? <laughs> um, you know they're actually charging for this stuff at, at least some level um i'm sure mcdonald's is paying some amount of money like at the enterprise level for it it'd be interesting to see somebody that's running metabase on an enterprise at like open ai or at uh mcdonald's um you know chime in on this but uh anyway yeah so this is the first foray into 
Power BI alternatives, you know, because, you know, Microsoft is just, one, they've just lost focus on the ball, right? They're doing all this stupid stuff around Fabric, and Power BI is not being updated, you know, worth anything. They're really, you know, they've really released terrible, you know, awful amounts of features for pretty much a year and a half ever since Fabric was announced. They just have just abandoned Power BI desktop and Power BI in general for, to a large degree, I, I feel like, um, compared to what they used to. Um, plus, you know, they're jacking up prices by 40%, which just seems totally, totally outrageous to me. Um, totally way too much, way overdone. Um, so yeah, good time to set, set out and look at alternatives and stuff. So Metabase, you know, kudos to you. If, if there's one that you have on this, that you know about, that you'd like me to take a look at, that you don't see on this list, open source or not, uh, as long as it's got like a free trial or something like that, be happy to uh, take a look at it as part of this series. But yeah, that's it. That's what we're going to be doing. Uh, they won't be every of the next videos that come out. They'll be coming out intermittently between, you know, other things I'm going to be doing. Um, but, you know, I wanted to kick this series off. And, uh, yeah, hope you liked it. And I'll see you next time.